distinctive note of harmony has been struck in a small village in a diminutive Central American country. Bermudian Landing is typical of many small towns in the nation of Belize, except for one thing. Where man and wildlife might have come into conflict, a way has been found to find room for all. The town of Bermudian Landing has helped span the gap between the needs of people and animals. It has transformed itself into a sanctuary where all the residents can relax and enjoy life. Bermudian Landing lies along the Belize River, a perfect habitat for the primates. Of the six species of howlers, the black howler monkey is one of the largest and rarest in the Americas. The prehensile tail works as an extra hand. It's especially useful when reaching for juicy green leaves at the end of very thin branches. The animals spend a good part of the day feeding in the forest canopy. The howlers, known to the locals as baboons, form tightly knit troops that remain together for years. The young are pampered and well cared for. The Bermudian landing howlers are remarkably tamed for such shy animals, a tribute to the voluntary policy of live and let live. The man who first became manager of the community baboon sanctuary is Follett Young. An expert on howlers, part of his job includes convincing the next generation of Belizeans of the monkey's value. Now, first of all, we call them baboons locally. But that is not the, their correct name. It's sort of nickname for them, right? Their correct name is the Black Howler Monkey. What is their correct name? Black Howler Monkey. Monkey, correct. If the talk isn't enough to raise enthusiasm, a field trip which takes the children within a few feet of the wild animals usually captivates them. Yeah, yeah right there. The monkeys are easily found in the forest surrounding the village. Mm -hmm. Huh? You see only the one jump? Look straight, straight up. Look straight up there. Follett often has debates with this male over territorial rights. The howling is used by the male to stake his claim to his land. It's an ideal form of combat, non-violent competition. Calls echo through the village throughout the day. Another troop lets the first male know his presence has been noted. The sounds are amplified by elaborate throat structures unique to howlers. They can be heard up to a mile away. Sometimes the females add their voices to the discussion. Each tightly knit troop is led by a single male. He may have up to 10 members under his domain. Adolescents are allowed plenty of latitude, but know that mother and other adults are close by when needed. At about one month, infants begin to learn about their complex adult diet. 
The male's call signals other troops that he's moving on to another designated feeding tree within his territory. The heavy monkeys prefer moving through the trees to jumping, but are good acrobats when the need arises. For the young, learning to jump is a rite of passage. The older female adolescent has made it safely across, but the young one appears intimidated by a jump at a height of about 40 feet. An offer of help is common among howlers, which have a strong support system within the troop. The older one will not go on until she's done what she can to assist the four-month-old over this hurdle. Her living bridge has protected one of her relatives, which is to the benefit of the whole troop. Now they can catch up with the others. The route takes them right through the village, but even the young ones have learned that there's nothing to fear. The rest of the troop, including nursing young riding on their mother's back, are heading towards a favorite in their diet the fig tree. The fig bears fruit several times a year. Even with the hundreds of trees in their territory, the howlers always seem to know when a new crop is ripening. Some of the many plants on which the monkeys feed contain toxins, but they have an uncanny ability to know just how much and what part they can eat of each plant. The dangers of this diet mean they must have a big selection of food from which to choose. A large number of trees is essential if they are to survive. All the landowners in Bermudian Landing have agreed to leave sufficient vegetation for the howlers. And the idea took hold in other villages in the region. The entire um, village of Bermudian Landing is the sanctuary. And um, not only Bermudian Landing, but we have um, seven other villages that are involved in the sanctuary. And it is all voluntary, you know, that these landowners um, decided that they are going to sign this uh, voluntary pledge to protect habitats for the um, monkeys, and not only the monkeys, but other um, wildlife. The howlers are attracting a growing number of tourists to the village, which the town welcomes. In this struggling economy, many of Bermudian Landing's residents depend on agriculture and cattle to make a living. For Elston Wade to choose to leave trees in his valuable grazing land is a radical departure from typical attitudes in Central America. His land lies along a pathway for one of the troops which plays in the trees that still stand here. Elston Wade realizes that the monkeys are as dependent on the land as he is, and he has made room for them. We have pledged quite a while ago to leave all these strips of land and trees like this for the monkeys because there is where they get their food. They are not much use for my cattle, but they farm a bit of shade. But I thought about the monkeys when I start leaving them. As a matter of fact, we share this environment with ourselves, our family, our livestock, and the monkeys. So they are a part of us right now in Bermuda Land. They are doing very, very well.
The troop in Mr. Wade's pasture feel so secure here that they do something which is distinctly unholler like Normally, the animals prefer to stay in the trees where they're safe from predators like jaguar. Yet here, they have become bold enough to take a path along the ground. Each one approaches cautiously, but is willing to take the risk. They know from experience that it is quite safe. The monkeys get protection from the citizens of Bermudian Landing in ingenious ways. When a new road was built into town, Follett Young saw a potential problem which he quickly moved to avoid. When the new road was built across the Belize River, the monkeys were crossing on the road, you know, and I saw a uh, danger for them from traffic on the, on the road. So um, I came up with an idea to make a rope bridge across the road. It took some time, almost a year, before they started to use it, but now they are using it uh, very regular. The troop uses the bridge to go safely back and forth from a fig tree to the main part of their range. I am pretty um, proud, and I know that all the, the landowners, um, not only in Bermuda Landing, but all the other villages are proud as well, because it is the only sanctuary in the world um, that is set up this way. People on a hole can get so, so close to them. Uh, I've witnessed people getting four or five feet away from them and they are not uh, concerned at all about uh, people's presence. It shows that um, they are very used to, to people. The display offered to villager Camille Young is the same as the one that can be observed between playful young howlers. The adolescent males will also offer to play with the dominant male in their group. It may be a way of appeasing him so that they can extend their stay in the troop. Eventually, they will be harassed into leaving and will settle down with their own group. The monkeys in the community baboon sanctuary are very fortunate compared to wildlife throughout much of Central America, where years of poor land use have taken their toll. Howlers are very rare in any areas where the trees have been burned to clear land for agriculture. Except for Belize and a few parts of neighboring Guatemala and Mexico, these primates have all but vanished, like the smoke from the fires that surround them. As valuable hardwoods continue to be taken from what's left of the rainforest, the whole process shows little sign of ending. The dilemma for poor countries to provide for both their citizens and their wildlife is far from being solved. That's why the lush forest that still lies along the Belize River is so significant. Grassroots movements like that of the community baboon sanctuary hold great promise and set an example for the rest of Latin America. Since the Belizean sanctuary was established in 1985, the population of howlers here has risen from 800 to well over a thousand. The troops are stable units that eat, sleep, and travel together. Their whole existence is a particularly peaceful one, with physical battles occurring only rarely. The females show great interest in all the babies and will share the responsibility of caring for them.
catalyst for the sanctuary was biologist Rob Horwich, who had visited Bermudian Landing for years. Uh, anybody see the baboon in the fig tree this morning? Yeah, they came across the bridge right there, and right now they're in the fig tree right over there. Good, good, thanks a lot. All right. The howlers had been studied by Horwich since 1981. Noting their decreasing numbers, he also saw the possibilities in Bermudian Landing. After contacting Follett Young, the sanctuary idea was born. A petition was passed around and signed by many residents in the village. Horwich also saw something in the plan which would benefit the people as well as the monkeys. The community baboon sanctuary was an experiment and it's been successful way beyond my original expectations. Um, we have, we started with very few tourists and now we're bringing tourist dollars right to the community and the dollars are circulating. And it's been such a success in terms of tourism, public education, education for school kids that I'm now trying to duplicate this idea in other areas. The monkeys hardly ever fail to put on a good show for the busloads of tourists that come in. There's a small charge for the groups, and the local economy benefits from any other dollars that are spent here. As the villages surrounding Bermudian Landing took up the idea, more forest was preserved. These communities are finding a solution to a problem that outside agencies have failed to address. Everybody seems to win, from monkey to resident to visitor. Today, the young monkey who was afraid to jump is faced with the same prospect once again. He's with the same troop member who's a more experienced hand at this sort of thing. Now it's the young one's turn. Success and another step towards maturity. Back in Bermudian Landing, tourists can make a day of it with lunch before siesta. Residents like Miss Anne Bazaar have set up bed and breakfasts and offer delicious meals with local specialties like spicy chicken and rice and beans. Sometimes it's dokono, ticket to meat. While she cooks in her tiny kitchen, tourists can enjoy appetizers like the fruit of the cashew tree, which grows just a few feet away. The minimal charge for lunch is a big help to Miss Anne and her husband and eight children. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, can, we notice the monkeys, uh, the baboons, very close. We can hear them now. Yeah, they come close. Uh, they come to the house? You know, they come right to the bush. The they, want, they come and look for food, cashew. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they okay. eat the cashew. They hold it by the seed, and then they take off this fruit and then drop the seed. The children of Bermudian Landing are always on the lookout for cashew as well but the monkeys get first choice. The seed coverings are highly poisonous and the monkeys don't touch them, but the fruit is eaten enthusiastically. Fruit that the monkeys leave behind can be gathered to make wines, preserves, and other foods. For humans to safely eat the nuts, the covering must be removed and the seed processed. Since the nuts aren't touched by the monkeys, the children can still collect them from the half-eaten fruits. They give them to their parents who prepare them for eating. While occasionally sold in the village, the nuts are more often considered food that nature provides. Help each other. All right. Yeah. <laughs> After the midday meal, most residents in Bermudian Landing settle down for a midday siesta. 
The easygoing monkeys prefer to rest in their food trees for convenience sake. Not everyone in Bermudian Landing is taking a break. Rob Horwich and Follett Young are as fascinated by the monkeys as ever. With their initial enthusiasm and the continued participation of everyone who lives in the area, the community baboon sanctuary of Bermudian Landing and the surrounding villages has worked beautifully. This idea could well be a part of the answer for countries all over the world. The word about the baboon sanctuary is spreading, and the message is clear. People and wildlife can coexist. And it is individuals working together which can bridge the gap between man and the natural world. Yeah, there seems a sense that they are protected. Uh -huh. So um, they have nothing to fear. Mm -hmm.